Text auch bewusst nicht mal hat, aber er möchte auch nicht richtig Go ahead. <laughs> uh, because on the level of uh, the document of 50 pages, usually it's sort of sticks in your head. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's an interview. Are we recording? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I do not know. I think it's already uh, recording. Yeah, I think it's yeah. <laughs> the, the thing, someone here. Yes, so it is that. recording. All right. Do you know? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Something is blinking. They're very, apparently very good at cutting off the, right. the front before they put it up on YouTube. Hopefully. <laughs> I guess people have a few more seconds. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> seconds. <laughs> so it's <be> 49. <laughs> <laughs> The Jack is also wearing trousers instead of shorts. Yeah, there's two more people who have a conference. I think. So, as to not delay the schedule too much, we will start. And so, for the sparse of the usual audience, we'll start with Luis on Text Martin, the archive with LLMs. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here. And thank you for the organizers for this uh, nice event. Nice. Uh, so today I'm going to be talking about uh, text mining the archive um, using large language models. So first of all, um, I, uh, I'm going to be looking for extracting the math terminology uh, from the part. Uh, and that, uh, and I'm going to be doing that using large language models. So this is, you know, the, the normal, well, the usual uh, language models like Word, Lama, GPT, and that sort of stuff. So, uh, with the remaining time, I'm gonna uh, talk about how to organize the results, uh, put them together, and how to, uh, you know, sort them by importance and by their meaning. So the source of all the data today is going to be the archive, and uh, they make it really easy to download uh, the, the, the whole content of their website. Uh, oh, we will die here if you close it. <laughs> Please leave it open. It's open. We, we need the oxygen. Yeah, Don't close the windows, yeah, please. It's not yet. Yeah, it is, but we will suffocate. <laughs> So in their source code, when they're writing the, uh, the article, uh, some authors more their definition with uh, a definition environment. And uh, so that gives us a true definition, right? So that's uh, a true definition, an example of a, of a definition. And so to identify the term being defined, I use uh, some websites that have a very consistent structure uh, throughout like Wikipedia, or the Stacks project, or uh, Planet Math. So they normally read their article, and then they actually uh, tell us, uh, in a section called the definition, they tell us the, the term that's being defined. Uh, so, so from here, we can do uh, we can with with this data we can train a text classifier, uh, so also called a sequence classifier because it actually classifies a sequence of tokens, and it actually it's a binary classifier. It just tells me if a paragraph is either a uh, definition or not. Uh, so here we have uh, an example from you know like a random uh, article. And there's this, um, this uh, paragraph that 
actually looks a lot like a definition. So, by the way, uh, this is all contained in, in the work of Jan Gidnev. Um, and uh, so the next part is to find the, the term being defined, right, which is here. So the classifier doesn't actually look at the italic text. So uh, the token classifier is going to classify each token in the whole definition as either being part of the term being defined or not. Uh, so uh, I have a good website here that can be used to look at the term. So it's a This is actually, of course, I looked at an example that works, right? I've never uh, used an example that doesn't work. So here we see uh, a lot of definitions, they come from the archive, right? Uh, so those are the articles. This links to the article. I don't know if, if we can actually open it up, but so there's plenty of different definitions of the same term. And uh, sometimes, if there are uh, similar results or similar terms, uh, it would be listed uh, here. But in this case, the, nothing shows up. So more on that. So uh, from here, we uh, we have this. So now let's look at the results. Right. Oh, before that, just a short uh, code example. So how it, it looks when it's coded, right? So this is actually a fine-tuned example of a pre-trained model, right? So this is a Python language. So you just import the relevant uh, so a sequence classification, uh, a token classification example, uh, the data collator, which means uh, it's just a you know, logic to put together the tokens after you have uh, worked with them. And the uh, tokenizer, because each model has its own tokenizer. So then you just pick your, your the model that you want to work with. So in this case, you can use uh, any UDP, uh, Roberta, or this one, Big Sign Bloom. You could use a llama and that sort of stuff. And it, Works most of the time, but you know there's always uh, a little bit of trouble, especially when, when working with uh, big uh, data sets. And then you sorry, just sorry, Luis, are you going to talk about evaluation eventually? Yes. Yeah, I think it's next. Nice. Yeah. So, uh, so actually, uh, so then you just do the epochs, right? And normally, three to five epochs does the trick. Normally, just three of them. That sort of stuff. So, will, will you speak more about the pipeline, like how you how they are like get the data, and then what are the training data for you? Or uh, oh, uh, I'm not, no, I, I, I'm not touching the data anymore. But I can answer. <laughs> like, if you can, <laughs> yeah. So, 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 Dan gives you. He has some pre-trained model already, not what you are training, which judges what are the definitional paragraphs, right? Oh, yeah, so the examples of the definition I just take from the labeled uh, tech, uh, And it's labeled by the author? By the author, yeah. By, by the mm -hmm. author. Yeah. Oh, so, so, so either you or they are extracts it by the definition tags. Say that again? Either you or they are extracts from an article the paragraphs that Oh, oh yeah, yeah. So, so, the yeah, so Dejan has the uh, archive uh, five. Uh, can, oh, yeah, the, yeah. The, yeah, so he has a really uh, large pre processed uh, data set. Yeah, I, I actually uh, uh, haven't used that uh, because um, 
So that's like too big. So now it's, uh, yeah. Uh, so I've been using another uh, sort. So I just used the, the normal LaTeX. Oh. Mm -hmm. And then. it myself, basically. Yeah. But will you say what are you training on using this, this code? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. So now I think it's time for the results. So I have uh, several. Um, uh, several uh, samples here. So there's two parts, right? So the method, so there is a specification uh, for the definitions, right? And then there's a second task, which is actually picking up the, the terms being defined. So uh, we see that there's uh, lots of models, and the best performance was. Uh, um, the Roberta Large model, and for the token classification task, it was the very large case. So, um, as a baseline, uh, I used, uh, you know, the, the, the baseline is our, are the bag of words method, which they perform uh, not as good. And then there's also a comparison with the LSTM neural models which uh, actually perform, uh, uh, you know, like middle of the road. So these are the neural, but not uh, transformer-based models, right? not L1. What are you measuring here? Oh, thanks. Yeah, that's the F1, or because uh, both tasks are a classification. It's a binary classification. So, so the first one is a uh, classification of paragraphs. Yeah, but um, what's your gold standard you're measuring against? Uh, oh, so the gold standard is, uh, this is like the test uh, data set, and uh, I'm, I measure it's either correct or it isn't. Uh, so which one is the golden data set? Mm -hmm. yeah. Which one is that? That's right, right, yeah. So I just pre-process all the LaTeX beforehand, and then uh, I keep some examples out of the How data set. Oh, the sizes? The uh, size of the, the mm -hmm. golden. Yeah, let's see. Uh, so it's, I uh, don't remember exactly, but it's probably a 10%, between 10 and 20%. And, and that is how, I mean, 10% of what? Oh, of the whole data set, yeah. And mm -hmm. what is the whole data set in this case? Oh, the whole data set is all the definitions uh, that I. Uh, how many definitions in total? Uh, yeah, that's uh, I can remember, but it's it's a lot. It's probably the tens of thousands. Yeah, I can I can come up, I can come back with that. So is this uh, is the data set all of math archive, all of archive? All yeah, of exactly. It's all of math archive. Math archive. Mm -hmm. And how do you know what the tokens are that you classify? So you uh, did you. Did anybody do a manual annotation of the definienda? Uh, uh, how, how, what, are, what are you? Yeah, I, uh, so the, the definienda, uh, they come from this part. Right? Yeah, but it, I think the question is how do you know the ground truth of yes. your test set? Uh, so, yeah, I just compare it to uh, these examples. So I get a definition. Uh, a definition. Like did did a human being go? This is the answer. This is the answer. This no, the no. Answer. I just uh, used this data. But then you're getting all the Mentions. technical term, technical terms in a definition, right? Mm -hmm. So that so you're that's why you call it token classification. So it's not actually you want, you want to pick up the Define terms of a definition, but all the terms in there. Right. Okay. Now we understand. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I, I, I still don't because <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you get these labels from Stacks and Wikipedia and Planet Math, mm -hmm. but like, how do you train on archive? Uh, like you, you say that whatever is in italics in the definitional paragraph is the defined term? Or? No, I never use italics. I never use like typesetting. I use like the title of the, for example, in Wikipedia, right? I just use the, the, the title that has 
uh, definition section. And in the definition section, the title of the article appears. Well, so that, that only gives you terms that somebody might want to define. Right. That doesn't tell you that the article defines it, that the well, archive paper actually defines it. The, archive, the, the, the Wikipedia site has a definition section. So that sure, is, sure. Mm -hmm. I'm just looking for examples here. Right. Then I train on that, on the archive data. But like, how do you get the labels on the archive? On Wikipedia, I understand you get the title mm -hmm. of the web page, but how do you get the label? Oh, yeah, yeah. So I train on, on this data from, from the Wikipedia stacks and that map. But okay. then I do inference on the... Oh, archive. so you never train on archive. Right, right. Oh, okay. yeah. yeah, sorry about that. I'm sorry, it's still a problem, right? Because mm -hmm. even if you train on, on, on the Wikipedia say, things, when you, when you then um, check things out in the archive, as you're saying in your example, it's very difficult to see whether you're getting the right term, right? You, you mean know, because the styles of the, of the Wikipedia and the archive are different? That's very No, okay. but because, yeah, okay, because the archive people are kind of doing all the definitions as well, and you, there you don't have perhaps the, the ability to. You know, if I'm defining the shower sequence, as you're saying, mm -hmm. you know, the, I, I'm using the Banach space, but the Banach space is showing up there too. So which which one of these terms are kind of going, I think, on that definition? I thought you'd have some human kind of checking at least a certain number of those to say, okay, this is really the definition of, of the shower sequence, not whatever sequence, not the Banach space definition. Mm -hmm. I mean, I check uh, the data if it, uh, beforehand uh, to see if it makes sense. Yeah. But I don't, I don't kind of go over the checking. Right. Yeah. Thank you. So, uh, sorry, so. So, yeah, so, so uh, taking a look at the results, right, so the the most natural question is which are the terms that are most commonly defined. So those are the results. Or of course it changes between uh, when you like uh, switch between models and between uh, methods. But uh, it's pretty consistent for at least for the terms with multiple words. Uh, if if you just look at terms with only one word then it changes a lot. Um, so the other, uh, this picture here is, um, so the relative place at which a, a definition appears in an article. So, you know, it kind of makes sense. Um, so at the beginning, you see a lot more definitions and then it just tails off uh, slowly. And uh, this one is actually kind of up. So the, the zero to one there is the location in the article? Yeah, it's the, uh -huh. so it's the, the, num the article number in the paper. So uh, the relative article number in the paper. So, uh, oh, I'm sorry, the relative paragraph. Relative paragraph. Yeah, so every, yeah. So this is. So you're saying that in the archive data set, uh, people define full subcategory as far as your concern, 6,000 right. times. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. so, um, so this is kind of a failed attempt. I was uh, looking at how often, uh, uh, so how often a term is being defined. So I was looking at the term uh, any term that contains the word Richie. And I was trying to, you know, like, see a bump after, you know, per Perlman solution in 2004, I believe. Or, yeah. But it kind of, there's a bump, but it, I, I don't know. I don't know. It's just, I uh, just wanted to show. But, but it looks like there is a bump, right? Like it, Perlman. Yeah, but like... then it's, it, there's a big, uh, there's a, not a big bump afterwards. I was expecting something else. But, but, but the reason is, of course, that there are too many terms in differential geometry where Ritchie appears. Mm -hmm. but also, I mean, he didn't invent Ritchie flow. It was 20 years old at that point. It's not already very popular. Oh. And as soon as I'm saying Ritchie tensor, Ritchie curvature, it will also appear. 
Mm. Yeah, yeah. It, there's a lot to look into it. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. But it was a good attempt. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so here we see a um, dimensional reduction of you know, a lot of terms. So we have a. Um, so, so every article in the archive has a category, uh, a label. So here I'm showing a natural, uh, uh, sorry, number theory, differential geometry, function analysis, and optimal control. And I do a uh, pretty common, uh, you know, the, the dimensional uh, reduction thing to just uh, look at the results. And then I randomly pick um, points and put the word inside it. So. Uh, there are some pretty good ones, but then there's, you know, like <coughs> mistakes. You know, like, of course, there's. So this is not not what we want. Uh, I got things that are more complicated to describe, right? Like, for instance, subcategory. It's not a full concept. It should be subcategory of something, right? Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Same mm -hmm. things kind of happening here somehow. Mm -hmm. Because you can tweak the model so that it likes longer sequences or shorter ones, but you know, like that's kind of uh, playing around too much. I just go for the best F1. Oh, the, the, the other thing is that uh, to get good comparisons between different models, I actually had to uh, limit myself to the uh, length of some models because not all language models have the same. Uh, size that they, they, they do all admit the same uh, sequence size uh, so that that was a limiting factor uh, so the comparisons are not perfect uh, just another picture so this is uh, actually doing like uh, you know uh, case centers uh, and then finding the nearest neighbors so it actually uh, also looks you know, good. So the green ones are the papers marked as, uh, I wanna see, I, I'm sorry, I didn't know. But I think this is functional analysis and this is algebraic geometry. But I, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure about that. Uh, and uh, so the centers, uh, they really seem to have a topic. So, uh, so that, Interesting. This is sorry. Each single point is a paper or a definition. Oh yeah, thanks. Each each point is a term. So I give the the center, the hidden centers of you know certain clusters, and then just uh, look at the nearest neighbors of each. Okay. Point. But then it's a very small number of points. It, what do you mean by a small? How many points? This is. Ah, no. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, the red points are the centers of the clusters. Yes, and every. Okay. And I picked the number of clusters, right? Right. With but how clusters. often a term appears does not matter here. It's just the nearest neighbor of terms right. mm -hmm. in your distance. And, but how often they actually occur and whether there's clustering in papers is not being measured. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, it, there's. Uh, I mean, if uh, if the term appears a lot, the optimization method is gonna do something about it. But it shouldn't matter. But numerically, maybe it matters. But it does matter a bit which kind of terms that you get. So it kind of bounded is problematic because you know a bounded bounded can be so many different things mm -hmm. in different bits of mathematics, right? Right, so right. Oh, yeah. the reason I'm kind of was worrying about mm -hmm. saying yeah. in, in homogeneous or something so, like that. Mm -hmm. So right now we're just using the, the mean uh, after a while. Uh, I, mean, I think in the next uh, slide we start using the variance, like how, uh, how variable uh, the, the usage of a certain term is. Uh, and I, I notice you <coughs> don't depluralize, so I see functor and functor is morphism and morphisms, uh, uh, vertices and vertex. Yeah, this is yeah. definitely not plural. Yeah, I, I, yeah, you could do it, right? But uh, it's probably a good idea. Uh, so. Oh yeah, so 
so next, um, we can estimate the variance of uh, how, uh, how uh, different the context in which a word is used. Um, so with this, um, we use a very neat result in which, um, so together with the, the mean value, together with the uh, variance, uh, turns out to be uh, uh, interpretable. You can interpret it as a point in the upper half plane model, and then you can actually put it in hyperbolic geometry in the uh, upper, uh, upper half plane model, hyperbolic geometry. And this gives us uh, something that's called the is a score. So the is a score can be, uh, you, well, you can kind of read it however you want, but the way I'm gonna uh, use it is uh, the following. So, so the is a score, it's just a number that you compute um, between two terms, right? And it kind of reads like every house door space is a topology. So uh, it works uh, most of the time, I want to say. Like, you can play with, around with it and it normally works. Of course, it doesn't work always. Uh, so you, you have several examples here. And uh, it, it, it actually has a sign. So if you actually uh, ask for a commutative ring is an integral domain, it's going to give a negative sign, right? So it's the other way. It's the other way around. So it's pretty cool to play around with it, uh, but it breaks, of course, and I think someone mentioned about this. So it breaks when uh, actually one of the terms is a norm, like a word that's used in other contexts, not just as a field. So I think that's what is happening here. So this should be uh, negative, right? But it turns out to be uh, Positive and really big. And uh, the first um, thing that you need to uh, see is that if the number is really big, that means that the actual points are very far away. So that's a sign that it's not working. You know? so, yeah. so, so how, how do you train this embedding? Oh, it's just like with the normal algorithm. The, uh, so it, it's just a, a modified version of. Uh, glob or work or work to back, yeah. Uh, so, so they just changed the metric. So, so this is done by you, and there, there is no pre-trained model. You you just run it over all of the archives. Yeah, I, I run. I didn't write the routine. It's just a, a you just change the um, the metric to uh, which is the objective function, right? Mm -hmm. uh, to whatever you want. Mm -hmm. So in, in normal back, uh, normal word back, uh -huh. it's just uh, the you know like the Euclidean metric. Mm -hmm. But then if you just change it for some you know like hyperbolic tangent or something mm -hmm. like that, then it it becomes. Uh, yeah, I was wondering here whether like if, if it was obtained by by some pre-trained embeddings on on a much larger corpus than than math or oh, archive. No, it's, it's actually just. Uh, done with uh, very reduced uh, data of the, the, from the archive. It's okay. uh, it's it's really fast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, but like you you could imagine that some of these like spurious uh, uh, correlations or is, is a, uh, relations would be caused by pre-training on some non-math data, right? Like that you would get some wrong meanings from the non non-math. Uh, data, but mm -hmm. yeah, 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 that's, you can get true, it. True. Uh, yeah. yeah, maybe it actually helps that it, I uh, just turned it uh, only on, on the archive yeah. data. Uh, yeah, that's that's completely true because then, if, like, some words would just have different yeah. uh, meaning, right? Um, so, finally, um, just to mention a little bit of, of uh, actual uh, formal libraries, right? So, I'm gonna try to. Uh, so this actually hasn't haven't done this yet, but I think it's a good idea. So I just wanted to mention this. So uh, so there's um, oops, sorry. So um, there's this. So uh, there's 
this uh, method that's really interesting uh, in which you have two knowledge graphs. Uh, so the first one is going to be made from the archive with the uh, hyperbolic, the, the embeddings that I just showed, right? So I just compute the ice, the is a score of every term and then just uh, keep looking for them uh, over and over again until I get a graph that looks like this. So, uh, so this is actually a tree, you know, like uh, some of these visualization, graph visualization algorithm, you tell them to graph a tree, it's gonna always look at, like a tree, but I can guarantee you that this is, you know, this has no cycles. So what's that top node? Uh, I can't remember, it's probably prime or something like that. Yeah, this is, oh yeah, it, I, it might be a number theory uh, graph. Yeah, so it's, the, the first one is just a, uh, either a very basic word or an error. Mm -hmm. Oh, thanks. So, so, uh, so again, uh, so I just, uh, for this method, I just need to find uh, in a, Second knowledge graph, I just need to find a few points in common that could be uh, done with, you know, the documentation of a formal uh, library. And then I just, I can run this uh, algorithm called the, the hyper uh, KA, hyper knowledge association. So that's for hyperbolic. Uh, and uh, it's gonna find the, the best uh, transformation between the two knowledge graphs. So it's just an immediate translation between uh, two knowledge graphs. So I'm really looking forward uh, to doing that even in the future. Uh, so some conclusions. So uh, this approach uh, gen generates what I think is a very complete maybe comprehensive is too much of a word, uh, list of all the terms uh, used in the archive. Um, so it, it provides provides a very fast search uh, for similarity and dependency. And uh, I'm really interested uh, in looking at possibilities to, you know, like applying it to flipping formal or the tetrapod model. Thank you very much.